All right, guys, so the question reads, a 32-year-old man who is a diabetic, hypertensive, develops drooping eyelid and double vision. He is diagnosed with cranial nerve 3 palsy. His pupil on the affected side is normal. What is the most likely cause of the cranial nerve 3 palsy? Is it A, cranial nerve 3 ischemia? Is it B, anterior communicating aneurysm? Is it C, uh, posterior communicating artery aneurysm? The reason I like this question, I try to fit it into a short, but it was just too much information, and it's too much of a concept you need to know. The reason it's kind of dear to me is because, you know, when I pulled out, you know, I, I had flashbacks when I was reading this question, was when I had my step, my step, when I was studying for step one, I got to this picture right here in my step one book, and it just, it just really didn't make a lot of sense to me. I was like, what are they trying to teach me here? Uh, you know, because I got these two, they got cranial nerve three, there's two shades to it. There's an outer and an inner. It looks like the inner goes to the uh, output to the ocular muscles, uh, down and out, gaze. Um, and then the, the outer is more parasympathetic and it's affected by the compression, you know, and then we're talking aneurysm. So I didn't quite understand what they were talking about. But that is the purpose of this video. What I'm going to say is at the end of this video, you're going to be able to teach that to somebody else. You know, that's the goal. So let's think about this, cranial nerve 3 palsy. Well, what do we know about cranial nerve 3? Well, well, we do know it affects the extra extraocular uh, eye muscles, okay? So let's think of it like that. So if this is just a basic, you know, let's just say basic person, the cranial nerve 3, uh, what's that mnemonic that we always, we always do? We go SO4, LR6, all over 3. SO4, LR6, all over 3. Well, what does that mean? Well, that's all the movements of the eye. Um, so superior oblique is cranial nerve four, lateral rectus cranial nerve six, and everything else is cranial nerve three. So the superior oblique, you know, allows us to go down and in. Okay, so that's cranial nerve four. Uh, and then we have the lateral rectus, which allows us to go, you know, laterally, you know, go moving eye, eye out. So. Everything else is innervated by cranial nerve three. So all these other directions, you know, down, up, down, left, right, all that kind of stuff is by cranial nerve three. So if I have a cranial nerve three palsy, okay, so if I knock out cranial nerve three, what do I have left? These guys. So let's just look at the right side. Uh, right, it's like right eye, I'm looking, we're looking at somebody. So let's look at the right side. If I knock out all my cranial nerve three, what do I have left? Well, I got my lateral rectus and I got my superior oblique. So what's going to happen to that eye, you know, and, and this kind of holds the eye in place uh, as far as where, you know, where it points. So if I knock out everything else, all I got left is this guy pulling that way, this guy pulling that way. So when it all averages out, the eye is going to go in the middle and it's going to go down. So this is what it's going to look like. I got an eye going this way and then on the unaffected side, well, he's just, well, looking, looking like he should. Now, the cranial nerve 3 also innervates the... Um, levator palpebrae, right? That's the one that raises the eyelid. So if he's impaired, what's going to happen? I'm going to have this droopy eye. So I got this droopy eye. Let's say that's normal. I got this droopy eye. I'm looking down and to the right. It's not a good look. Um, but then the question is, okay, well, what is the cause of that? Okay, what's the cause of that? Of course, everybody's going to worry about, oh my god, it's a stroke. Well, the fact is, you know, to have a stroke, you got to have the, you know, typically you're going to have that that blown pupil per se. This guy does not, it, it's, it's, it's normal, okay? It's normal, so we know pretty much it's, you know, it's not going to be a stroke. But we still need to understand the cause, and we need to understand what were they trying to teach us with that picture right there. Well, here's what it is. If you took a cross-section of cranial nerve 3, okay? A cross-section, meaning just sliced it, you know, like you're, you're cutting the tree kind of thing. And so, again, cranial nerve 3... And then on the outside, you know, this, this outer rim, you're going to say this is the parasympathetic, okay? That interface is the parasympathetic. And then the, the in, inner part, that's just going to go to those oculomotor, um, you know, the oculomotor nerve, basically, which is going to do the eye, well, it is oculomotor nerve, but it's going to go to the muscles of, muscles of the eye more so, okay? More the motor output piece. So, the question becomes, is the injury from an aneurysm? If I can spell it right. Is it from an aneurysm or is it from ischemia? And when we say ischemia, we mean like uh, diabetes or something like that. 
So here's the key. If it was from an aneurysm, say that we have this artery right here, and you're going to know it's the posterior communicating artery. That's the most common one that's going to affect cranial nerve 3. So if we had an aneurysm in this guy, what's going to happen? He's going to bulge out, and what's he going to do? Is he going to hit the inside, or is he going to hit the outside? He is going to bulge and hit the outside first, okay? He's going to, he's going to affect the outside first. So what's going to happen? That's going to impair the parasympathetic. So if I impair the parasympathetics, what, what am I going to have more of? The sympathetic innervation, right? So what am I going to see? I'm gonna, am I going to see a, a regular-sized pupil or am I going to see a big pupil, right? Sympathetic, I'm going to have a big pupil. So think about that concept. Does that make sense? If I have a PCA uh, aneurysm and it bulges out and it touches the sympathetics, the sympath the, I mean, it touches the parasympathetics, it's getting impaired. So what am I going to have more of? I'm going to have more sympathetic innervation, uh, you know, for the, the pupillary muscles. So what's going to happen? I'll get a dilate. It's going to be dilated. The other one is ischemia. Now, if it's ischemic, this is where there's more innervation, I guess you could say, to the inner portion. You know, it doesn't just go and, and touch on the outside. It goes straight to the inside, which is going to affect what? That's going to affect the eye movement, the motor piece, Okay. So the fact is, they diagnosed it with cranial nerve 3 palsy. It looks like this, right? Drooping eyelid, eyes down and down into the uh, down and out. You know, it's kind of the classic classic look for it. So we know it's cranial nerve 3. And then the, the, your next question is, your next question is, is the pupil affected or not? Okay, because if the pupil was affected, I'm leaning toward what? posterior communicating artery aneurysm. If the pupil's not affected and it's normal, I go with cranial nerve 3 ischemia, okay? So that's a concept I couldn't fit it into all of one minute. You know, you got into the basics of the cranial nerves, especially when it comes to the eye movements. Cranial nerve 3 does most most all of them, except for those two, so you're going to go you're going to go down and out. We just have to be looking on the right side. And then for this cranial nerve 3 palsy, understand this concept right there. And again, now we can correlate it back to our, our book, cranial nerve 3 in cross-section. Again, the outer piece is the parasympathetic output, affected first by compression. PCA berry aneurysm, okay? It's exactly what we talked about. Uh, use pupillary light reflex and assessment, blown pupil, right? It's too big. It's going to be big. So, and then the center, output to the ocular muscles, um, affected primarily by vascular disease, diabetes, okay, uh, due to decreased perfusion to the interior symptoms, ptosis, we knew that, right, cranial nerve, cranial nerve 3, uh, levator palpebrae, and then a down and out gaze. So, guys, this is how you kind of study for step one. You say, because first of all, if you were to read this by itself like I did many years ago, I'm like, oh my God, what, you know, this doesn't make any sense to me. You know, someone's got to teach me this stuff. But if you can go back and understand it like this to where you can say, okay, it pushes a little bit on the outside. It affects my parasympathetic. I got too much sympathetic. Therefore, big pupil, okay? Whether it's or it's going to be an ischemia, ischemia from diabetes, it's going to affect the inside. That's going to affect the eye movements, but it will not affect my, uh, my pupils, which would be normal. So... Guys, hope this video was helpful. I'll try to make a short one that kind of covers some concept, but it won't have as much teaching in it. And um, as always, you know, keep moving forward, guys.